how to handle other parent not reimbursing for 50% of healthcare, childcare, camps, etc. This really comes down to a language issue within your agreement. So I'm assuming at this point, you either have a temporary order or some sort of judgment that lays out a split. If you have not addressed this issue within your judgment, you're kind of screwed because there's nothing that is going to require the other person to pay unless somehow that's built into your state, state statute. So in Massachusetts, within our child support guidelines, we have something that there's child support, but then extracurricular activities and uninsured expenses are dealt with in addition to child support. So those aren't things that are typically included within a child support order. How it's written is very important, and this is where it comes down to the written language. Whenever I write in a clause, I lay out specifically, you know, how long somebody has to provide a receipt. Um, you know, here, here we deal with health care different than child care and camps. So those are three very distinct and different things. So child care for us is actually built into our child support guidelines. Now, if you're in Massachusetts, whether you have 50-50 or you don't, if the two of you are splitting childcare equally, I recommend not putting that in the guideline calculation because if you split it and then put it in, what happens is whoever is paying child support actually ends up paying additional amounts towards childcare and not just that 50%. So the calculation skews it and it, it ends up not being fair, but some people don't realize that. So that's a note if you are in Massachusetts. Now, as for health insurance, our guidelines is basically that the person who is receiving the child support payment is responsible for the first $250 per year of uninsured health expenses. And usually that's proven, and again, language is important, usually that's proven by providing a receipt and proof of payment. Now I write in, and this is both for uninsured medical expenses as well as extracurricular, which camps typically fall under extracurricular activities. If you're writing your language, make sure you write in that camp camps fall under extracurricular activities because if camps are extremely expensive, you know, especially if you're putting your child in camp for the entire summer, that gets pretty costly. So some judges won't hold somebody accountable, even if they're supposed to pay 50% of the extracurricular activities, they're not going to hold them accountable for camp if they disagree because it's an extremely, you know, more expensive than what you think of like, you know, $100 for a month of gymnastics. So make sure that that's written in. Language wise, and here's a tip if you're headed in or you need to fix something, you wanna have the amount of time that the parent who is incurring the expense, who's going to be looking for the reimbursement, to provide that to the other person. And typically, as an attorney, I want that done in email so I can see when it was sent over. Then from that point in time, you're gonna have another period of time that, that other, the other parent has to reimburse you for 50% or whatever percentage is worked out within the judgment. What I'll usually do is let's just call it 30 days. You know, parent A has 30 days to send the receipt and proof of payment and the or the invoice to the other parent, then the other parent has 30 days to reimburse. Now I will write in that if the receipts and the invoices are not sent within a certain amount of time, that they waive their right to reimbursement. Now, before you jump down my throat and say, that's not fair if we're you know, incurring the expense, they should have to pay us back, which yes, I agree they should. But what I see is somebody holds expenses for three years and rack up, you know, $10,000 worth of expenses that they never provide to the other party. And then all of a sudden they dump it on their lap and the other side's like, hold on, I, I can't just come up with five grand to reimburse you for these expenses for the last three years. And then they file contempt. Now that's not fair either. So I typically will write in, you know, the, the time frame that these things need to happen in. And if the other parent is not reimbursing according to the language, you can file a contempt. And if you file a contempt, don't just look for the amount of money they owe you. Ask for your day off of work that you had to take, any attorney fees that you're incurring, anything that you're incurring in regard to having to file, parking fees if you have to go to court. Ask for something above and beyond just that reimbursement because then it makes it where maybe they don't want to go back next time. Ask for interest on the funds. You know, if, if it's been a year and they haven't paid you, ask for, you know, an additional amount in interest trust because they shouldn't get away with just not paying. But you have to ask for it. If you don't ask for it, the court typically won't just do it. 